as you're, I will, as you think about this, we'd like to do another Dinners for Eight. We've seen some ads for it, Dinners for Eight, in which um, you, we go and eat at somebody's house and there's only eight of us. And so if you would like to be a part of that, I, we're hoping with as COVID and stuff that there's in the midst of life, we, we continue doing things. And so like to do that, we are needing some host and hostesses. So if you'd like to be a host, I can't pick up the phone. I uh, would like to be a, a host or hostess. That, that would mean that you would have people at your house. You'd be in charge of like the meat or main dish that's going to be served. And then the rest of the team that shows up, you'll be given notice of who it is. And you get to assign the rest of the meal to them. And so they can bring dessert or vegetables or whatever it may be okay and so if you liked it there it's a great way to get together and to meet one another multi-generations happen we do not it's a very spiritual event of putting the teams together it's called putting everybody's name in a hat and just pulling out <laughs> and it is amazing how god puts a great teams together to uh to sit around the table. So if you are interested, um, the sign up is going to be underneath the events table or events sign and so that you can be a part of dinners for eight. Put out their challenge of last week of trying to memorize John 15. Anybody get that far? Started. Started? <laughs> Give it a whirl. I heard a few people starting. We're still working on it. See if it's there. We go. Um, so it was just a throw out there option of, of trying to memorize chapter 15 of John. Um, Keep going for it in the version that you like. It is an ama it's an amazing chapter. It's a good, good chapter um, and a reminder of who we are. So just want to encourage you in that. And we just also want to encourage you to keep reading the Word of God. All right. So let's pray as we come to God's Word. Gracious God, I thank you for today. I thank you that, as we had an illustration, that your word is a sword. And it is a sharp, two-edged sword. And it is that which gives life. It gives life that is abundant and eternal. Father, I just ask that you, you would speak and we would hear. God, I would ask that your word would encourage us and that your word would find fruitful soil. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd have you reflect back on your life or in a short period of time uh, of those things that you have received from another. What are some of the things that you have received from another? Could be parents, could be strangers, could be neighbors, could be whatever. But you received something. So you're thinking about that. I can tell you, share you just a glimpse. I am overwhelmed by the amount of things that I have received. Um, when I asked Jane's folks if I could marry their daughter, they were all excited. They go, yeah. And then the next thing her dad said, do you need money for a ring? So I don't know what he was thinking of a, a seminary student being poor and that I was living on Campbell's tomato soup, but he didn't think I could afford a ring. And so I said, no, I think I can handle it. And so the next time I saw him, he already had written out a check. He says, here, you go buy my daughter a ring. So I was given an amazing gift. Actually, the amount of money I did have in the account, I could, I could go to those machines that you drop the quarter in. <laughs> That's about what I could afford. So he was not wrong, but I was just saying. When Jane had cancer, um, we were given the gift of 
I don't know, 15, 20 people who volunteered to give AIM rides up to, up to Duluth for radiation treatments. And it was five days a week, and they were there at uh, 8 o'clock, something like that. Treatments were at 9, you were back by 10. And we were overwhelmed. Six weeks of radiation, and uh, they took care of uh, five weeks of it, literally. When our house burnt down, we were overwhelmed by the amount of gifts that came to us again. Just a couple hours after the house wasn't officially out, but we left the site, the chairman of the church, uh, Ginger, came over and she had a grocery bag and she had socks, toothpaste, toothbrush, underwear, a pair of pants, and a shirt for each of us. I tell you, if you want to be humbled, have somebody else buy you underwear. <laughs> I was overwhelmed. I've been overwhelmed by cards of, uh, of, of encouragement. As my father passed away, my sister passed away, just the words given. It's humbling to receive. There's something different about receiving. When you receive it, you realize there's nothing you've done to earn it. It's out of uh, the grace of others that give it to you. And you just, you say thank you. Have you thought of examples of things that you have received in your life? And I just open it up. I've received many, many things um, that I can't even think of to name. But um, uh, yesterday, I got a message from Brittany and uh, Brittany Parker. <laughs> And um, she is sending me her three paintings that she just completed of Hope, Faith, and Love okay. as a gift. And it just touched me so much because they have been a part of my life forever. If they know okay. the story, but um, it just really touched me that she would think to give me that message of hope. Wow! So a gift for sort of those here. Don is saying that uh, Brittany has painted three paintings on faith, hope, and love, and is, uh, is delivering them to Dawn for her home. What amazing gift. Yes. Phyllis. Garage door opener. Somebody gave you a garage door opener. My kids. Your kids. I appreciate that garage door Yeah. What a gift from your kids. Yes. Wally. Her dad said, Paul is a really, really nice guy, but he have to be a dumb screen. <laughs> <laughs> he was Norwegian, <laughs> but he was an awesome, he was my dad. Yeah, he allowed, he gave you the gift of his daughter, even though you were a Swede. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all right. Just a one out there, anybody else want to? Melissa. The gift of being taken care of for almost a year with complete patience. Hmm. Yeah. A gift. Wow. Hmm. What would you like? What did you? What do you receive? My mommy and my daddy. Oh, yes, your mom and dad. Yes, they received you too. Mm -hmm. You're a gift to them. Ah, what's we, Linda? Surgery, four screws put in my foot. When I got home, within an hour, the doorbell rang, and here stood a man in Fairmont. I didn't know it hurt. I had the surgery, and he brought me an electric cart that I could run around in the house with. Mm. Walk on the foot. Okay. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You got one, Pecos? What'd you
You, you like them too, huh? <laughs> yeah. If we, if we think about it, we have received so much. I just want to say, we've received so much. And as we think about here, um, it's an act of humility and gratitude, but also receiving as a body of believers, we have received from God a ministry and a message to the world. I just want to tell you that we have received a ministry and a message for the world. And so we're just going to take a few moments. It's very brief today. Uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're dropping in the middle of Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. They are a church that, are, that is experiencing uh, some difficulties at times. But he's encouraging them that in what that's going on in their place, that God is doing a great work, and that God has given not only Paul and his team a ministry and a message, he's also given the church there a ministry and a message. And so I read from you, starting at verse 1 of chapter 4. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine on the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Paul is talking about himself, but he's also talking about the church. God has given us ministry. Ministry means service. It means work. It means uh, to be servants to another. It's what we do. Okay? I know we're coming to the fall, so like this is the last almost free day. So youth is starting on Wednesday. Sunday school starts next Sunday. Saddleback starts on Wednesday. Bible, women's Bible study is going to start on Tuesday. We have Alpha starting on the 30th. We have Confirmation starting on the 22nd. We have starting and going like crazy and it's going to be like chaotic for a while and you know in September when everything is starting we're pretty excited about it and then October and November come and we go oh, these stinking kids are showing up again you know and it's like oh man it's overwhelming I just want you to hear this that the ministry we have that God has put before us it, it is from God it is his ministry that he has given to us to do the work he's put before us and so when Jill and your youth team are like up to here with youth, you just have to remind yourself, this is God's work. This is his ministry, and he's just doing it through you and your team. Liza, when you can't find anybody to, because everybody's farming, <laughs> Denise, you got to just say, you know what? This is God's ministry, and he'll have the right leaders at the right place at the right time for tonight because it's his ministry, not mine. And Alpha, Katie, when it's going there, and we don't know how many are showing up and whether it's going to be two or 20, we got to remind ourselves, this is God's ministry, not mine. And he's given to me just to work through me. I just want you to hear that all the things that we do, it's not ours. It's his, given to us by his great mercy. And, and whether we think it fails 
or it succeeds, it's not our issue. It's his. I just want to say, it's his. And I just want to put that out there. It's his. We do have responsibility. Now, before you go, okay, I can just sit back and kick back and relax in my easy chair. No, Paul says there we have this, this ministry, right? Because of God's mercy. So, rather, he said, we do not lose, lose heart. We don't get discouraged when stuff happens or when we come under attack or nobody shows or we're thinking like, ugh, I can't take it anymore. We don't lose heart. Rather, we renounce secret or those are deceptive ways. We don't use shameful ways, meaning we do not use shame to convince somebody or using shame to prevent us from doing something. We do not use deception. It means like a snake oil salesman. Um, nor do we distort the word of God. It means that distorting, everybody knows distort, right? You twist it and manangle it. I want to tell you, a lot of people distort this. They want to distort it because they know if they can distort this, and they can do, that means they can distort you. Paul says there, when, we, when we're given this ministry, we do not use secret and shameful ways. We don't use deception. We do not distort the Word of God. On the contrary, we set the Word of truth plainly. All of you who are, all of us who are in ministry, this is, is the gold standard of ministry. Make the truth plain. Make it plain so people can understand. And all the ministry we're going to do, no matter what area it is, children's ministry, youth ministry, adult ministry, worship, whatever it is, the aim, the goal is what Paul said, we're, this ministry has been given to us, but here's the goal. Make the Word of God plain. Make it straightforward. Allow God to speak. Don't get in the way. Second, in the midst of it, we have the message. I'm going trying to go fast. Verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We have one message, one simple message. Jesus is Lord. No matter if it's youth ministry, children's ministry, adult ministry, worship, movie night, fun night, it doesn't matter. We have one simple message. Jesus is Lord. And that means not only of his position, what he's done for us, I mean, as God's son, as died in our place, as being resurrected, being at the right hand of God the Father, of coming back one day, that's all his, that's his, right? But it also reflects that when we say Jesus is Lord, that our life is in submission to him. That we're allowing him to be Lord of our life. See, we, we've gotten used to our politics, where we can say, do you love the president or you like the president? And we can have half the group go, yeah, no. And, and so we can talk against it. You can't do that with Jesus. You can't say Jesus is Lord and then go do off and do your own hank, hanky thing over here. Your, your life has to be in submission to Jesus is Lord. And this is what Paul is, is, as we as followers of Jesus, when we present the word plainly and we say Jesus is Lord, we have to not only say it, but that has to come through in what we do. That our life is in submission to Jesus and we're listening to him, we're obeying him, we're doing what he would have. So that our life demonstrates that Jesus is Lord. Does that make sense? Very simple. What's the, what do we have to say? What is our message? Jesus. Jesus is Lord. 
We say it. And how do we live it? Submitting to Jesus as Lord. My brothers and sisters, I want to just tell you, you have received an amazing ministry from God. It's His. To go and tell people that Jesus is Lord. With words and with actions. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, no matter who you are with, you are doing God's ministry with His message. Jesus is Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for today. I thank you for all that you're doing. And Father, I thank you that you have given to us the most amazing thing. And we're going to talk more about it, but that you have given us a ministry. A ministry that is yours, in which we get to say, Jesus is Lord. And demonstrate that with our own lives, that Jesus is Lord. Thank you. And we all know right here, that's a whole lot easier to say than to do. We need help. And so may you fill us with your spirit, give us courage and strength as we embrace your ministry of proclaiming Jesus is Lord. To you be glory and honor and praise this day and every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.